You are in for a treat today. You get to see the two of the dirtiest dirt boxes we got. This is mine. This is my partner's rig right here. So we're going to go over the flatbed, some of the cool features, some of the, the pros, the cons, and all that fun stuff for you. We'll go ahead and start with El Gladiator here first. We've got Gladiator and we've got a AEV Brute, very similar platforms, but uh, share the same bed. By the way, this same flatbed is what you would have if you had a Tacoma, a Tacoma short bed four door. So I'll go ahead and start with basically <clears throat> the, the beautiful thing with these flatbeds is we increase our departure angle de immensely. We also have no thin sheet metal. If you bounce it off a tree and whatnot, you're not gonna smash it. But the real key thing is besides that, that's nice for a little bit more of your kind of hardcore off-road type stuff, little uh, places throughout the whole flatbed. What I found before getting the flatbed set up, I would always have a, a crate or a case or whatever storage box in there strapped down. It was always in the way, it was always bouncing, and it just, it, you couldn't really keep everything. So obviously my back seat ended up being storage for almost everything. That doesn't work with tools, hammers, etc. As soon as getting rid of that factory bed that was on there and going to the flatbed, you've got storage throughout the whole underside of this, even if you don't have this upper section. And I'll show you all those storage options, but it's plentiful and it's everywhere. So I constantly, if I go somewhere and if it's not my vehicle or if it's just working on something for somebody, I generally have that tool already on board and I've been able to relieve a lot of the space in the back seat. I've got, now I've got room for passengers and everything else. So I'll start off with, the construction of these guys is extruded aluminum throughout the whole deal. Extruded aluminum, we hardened to a T6, so it's going to be more durable than your typical 5,000 or 2,000 series aluminum. We're able to get these tight bends and breaks out of a T6 extrusion because we're not actually bending it. It's actually getting shot out exactly the profile and shape that we want instead of getting a flat sheet that we have to bend, break, do all those things and fasten. So that eliminates a lot of those stress risers all over. And along with that, this gives us multiple mounting points through these tracks. These tracks are all over this flatbed. They're underneath, they're built into the canopy box. They're very obvious, obviously through here for our open canopy setup. But I'll kind of show you how all that works here. So what's cool about the hybrid box or the half box is I don't have full commitment like you do on this guy here where it's all storage, it's all set up for your full on overlanding needs. But if I want to use this as a work truck, like I do often, taking stuff to powder coating, picking up parts, I got nowhere to put it anymore unless I strap it up on top of the tent. So there lies the beauty of this guy here. You've got, besides everything in a regular bed, you've also got a little miniature pickup truck bed throughout here, which is really cool because I can fl flip everything down on this guy. And you've got your flatbed set up. Now what's also cool is I could literally rapidly remove all my bed sides as needed through the whole thing. Through there. And it truly is a flatbed. The neat thing is if you smash one of these guys, not only can we replace the whole thing, we actually have this setup where this bolts through, we've got plugged holes here so we could actually send you just this. Usually you're gonna damage one of the hinges so I can give you a new hinge or I give you the whole assembly, or we could drill out the rivets and just change out this piece of trip plate. Everything on the flat back, the, excuse me, everything on the dirt box product line is legified. We are literally legifying the Overland world, meaning you can exchange, you can reconfigure, you can rebuild it to what you want. So that's one thing that was kind of an interesting uh, conversation with a gentleman who had a Tacoma short bed and he's all worried about spending so much money on this and that and blah, blah, blah. What if I end up changing it to a new model? And I had to point out to him that as long as it's within the same rough size parameter of what he's currently got, 
we could switch them out with a different fit kit. We could switch them out with uh, different fenders, toolbox, and he could take that whole system and relocate it to a whole nother vehicle. Not a lot of company, oh, I don't know of anybody that could do that, but that is something that you could totally do with this system here. So again, you can change all this stuff up to whatever you want on there. And you can see we've got the open canopy frame here for mounting all sorts of goodies. I like to keep things flexible. So therefore, bungee central, shovel up top, a ladder strapped onto our l track through here. I could put a spare tire on there. My fuel can, there's enough room for a two inch uh, recovery strap hiding behind the NATO fuel can in there. Also, all I have to do because of the cell track, there's a bolt set up in there. You undo the one bolt and then I can remove it from the L track. Same thing with the spare tire carrier. If I want to do our spare tire carrier, we make an ultra lightweight aluminum, aluminum uh, spare tire carrier that locks into the cell track. The other thing is, as I start piling things in here, I can strap it down with tie points on the L track as well. So again, more versatility, more things you could play with and reconfigure that setup. And that's one of the things that sets the hybrid box apart from the big full-size box. want to talk about all the storage options that are available to you when you have that flatbed right here boom you have got storage collect all the junk you're ever going to need i keep brake parts cleaner lubricant uh cleanup stuff tape straps a bag of tools all in there just on this side here the reason i do that is typically i also have like toolbox setup that all folds out on the side as well when i do my full box because what i did not mention is you could exchange this box for the full box with just exchanging these four brackets so my typical mission has got to be a little more flexible. Therefore, I'm running the hybrid setup here. But if we're going for a big long run, if I'm going down to uh, deep Mexico or something like that, or maybe just even if I'm going down to the Ozarks, I'll probably put the full box on there. But this is a nice option. We have optional illumination through there, which is really good. Full compression latch. These things are right in the middle of road spray, mud, debris, everything. Always dry, always spotless in there, which is great. This box is exchangeable. This taillight assembly is also removable and exchangeable. The fender is also exchangeable. So if you wipe any of this stuff out, it can be replaced. Uh, then you go into probably the biggest crowd pleaser and mine, my favorite as well, is you got the super drawer in the back. I've got all sorts of goodies in here. Just my goodies, my goodies, my goodies, not my goodies. Just random stuff. The beauty with this is you're relatively low on your center of gravity. You're sitting right just barely above your frame, level, frame rails and it's flat. So directly ahead of this toolbox or slide out drawer is a 21 or a 25 gallon baffled stainless steel tank with incorporated water pump on it. So that is gonna be one of your heaviest pieces. So we keep that to the very front and then this is directly behind it. What's neat with this drawer, it's an entirely sealed case. It's not just a drawer riding on rails under the flatbed, it's a full sealed case on that. And a lot of you guys will be asking, well, what's the weight of the flatbed? So the weight of this flatbed with one, two toolboxes, the third, the slide out drawer with the uh, stainless steel baffled water tank with pump, with the headache rack, without the bed sides is 505 pounds. So, and that can vary depending on your cross member configuration. If it's a steel cross member or an aluminum cross member, uh, what that is. If it's a long wheelbase and all that, obviously it changes. But again, really nice setup through there. And then as you roll around to the other side, more of the same, where we've got again storage down through here. But on this side is where I go ahead and keep my water system on this guy. So I could do dishes, I could do to connect my line. <laughs> Basically, you got your water system up through here that you could go ahead and do your dishes, do everything else like that. I also have recovery gear, so there's a strap, extra tool kit, Swedish made ax. Everybody needs a Swedish ax. Uh, shovels, dog stuff. I got dog bowl, a little bit of dog food hiding in there and other recovery gear. That's primarily in this guy. And again, these latches, they're slick. Come through, that locks over, and then that's the compression and that seals it up against that bulb seal all the way through there. You can also padlock this, which is a serious deterrent when you're overseas because you've already got a key lock here. You put the padlock on, that is just gonna not stop somebody from being able to get in there, but it's definitely gonna know that you're serious about trying to keep them out. 
and the chances are they're probably just gonna roll on by and go to the next easiest prey. Okay, now as far as storage inside the canopy or the box setup or the actual dirt box. So this guy, obviously we've got illumination throughout this thing. These are dimmable lights. I could actually hold this down, bring this way low for that two in the morning tequila night, or just bring it all the way off or bring it up to full power. We've got a full electrical system set up through here, which is nice. There's a battery master disconnect. This shows my water level in the tank, which I was supposed to have winterized and I haven't yet. So I do have a heating pad on that just in case I forget. Along with that water level, I've got my fuse box right there for these switches throughout this setup here. So I've got five rocker switches. I could switch out to whatever I need. We have a mini Anderson connector for power in and also for power out. So the way this setup works is on the dirt box unit connected into this, we have a main Anderson plug that could go to your vehicle for most of the power you're gonna use, heavy power. And then we also have a small connector that is like an RV seven round flat, meaning we have, it's a round plug-in with seven flat connections inside that. And that plugs into basically a portion on the headache rack. And that's for turning on auxiliary lights, whatever you've ran in there. So you don't have to run a bunch of individual wires, just a cleaner way of doing it. And if for some reason you ripped it apart by accident, Walmart, AutoZone, you name it, you could get replacement pieces for that. So we try to keep everything somewhat generic as far as replaceable parts wise for years and years down the line uh, to go ahead and get replacement stuff because this stuff is going to last you, probably outlast your vehicle, quite frankly. So anyway, so there's the electric setup on there. Nice. Along with that electric, we have marker lights that run through around here, here, and then of course your rear setup. And our tail lights are actually pretty neat. They're a neat LED design, very unique, sexy. I like them. Everybody seems to like them as well. And they're just, they'll set you apart for sure. I went with a lighter kitchen setup on this guy. This is actually set up for a coffee maker right here. We've got runs that go underneath it for our cords and everything else. But what's kind of neat with this guy is I will usually run the big drop down slider kitchen. That's kind of the, the creme de la creme. You've got everything in there. It's big. It's got your wash area. It's got your availability for your stoves, your cooktops, whatever. And you can store everything in it. But it's a little bit heavy. It's a little bit more expensive. So for this guy, I'm trying to keep everything as light as I can because this is also my little Baja jump rig. And we're testing out our suspension stuff. So I'm trying not to bend an axle. But this guy, normally you have a, your coffee maker here. But as you can see from the side, I can access all my stuff. I've got dishes. I've got a bag of Oreos I shouldn't be eating. Um, my soap, my this, my that. And then I've got a nice little roll out prep table here. Keep in mind, this is a tall truck. So this is on a, a Gladiator on 37s, at least four plus inches of lift on this guy. This is manageable right here. So on a typical vehicle, this is gonna be down a few inches and it makes a big difference. But the deal with this is, it is literally 60% lighter than the drop kitchen slider that I would typically run. So it was kind of a nice deal with this. It's also significantly less money because you don't need to buy the slider and you don't need to buy the whole fold out kitchen. So this is a good option. We also have it set up where this is enlarged through here and a microwave oven sits in there. So since I am not a cook, that's kind of what's going on next. I just want to try out the coffee maker first. So anyway, there's that guy, really handy, really lightweight. And again, it just goes, it fits the contour of the box shape through there. That's another thing we got going on. These slots here are for putting on molly panels, or you can just molly right directly onto this. So that's gonna allow me to be able to put a separate bag of goodies on there. There are multiple positions on the struts to allow for different heights. This one, I had to only go so high because we have our 270 awning up there. And we could also accommodate you with really strong struts that you know, lift a small child in the air when you open it. You ready? Yeah. That's when you're putting really heavy stuff like roto packs and whatnot on the outside here. Because you could also get this equipped with L-Track on either side, both sides, wherever you want to do. That's another nice thing with this. You don't have to pay us to do these mods. We could give you the components and you guys could drill this stuff and mount it. It's not steel, it's aluminum. Therefore, when you're drilling holes in anything that's steel, 
wherever you drill that, you got paint removed, eventually uh, moisture gets in there, it'll start rusting, it starts to peel away the paint and whatnot, and you know, in five, six years, your stuff looks bad. The aluminum doesn't care. If the paint peels off, no biggie. It's not gonna corrode, just hit a little bit of black on it. And the reality is you're gonna hit stuff, you're gonna scratch it, you're gonna use it, it's gonna get beat up. So having that kind of matte black finish is a nice deal for being able to do your touch up. So the headache rack that goes on this guy uh, is through here. It's extrusions, very similar to the open canopy on the rear here, just a little bit bigger. We have our fuel cap right here. I haven't gotten the one that says diesel yet, so we have to use one off my G-Wagon. It says diesel, because it is a diesel Gladiator. Water on this side isn't really water, it's def. Kind of close to that. The other side has the water fill. But yeah, I just opened these guys up. They're a, a slick, nice sealed. It's, it's basically a marine type setup through here. So, stainless, you know, it's not gonna rust out. It's good stuff. And then the cap is, uh, we have two different styles. We have this cap, and then we have a regular automotive one. The automotive one is probably what most of you guys are gonna see. It's kind of ugly, because it looks like a regular car one, but that's, you know, EPA type stuff. We'll probably stick with that. A neat thing hiding in here too, is we've got a 110 power source right there. So that plugs into our Jackery or our inverter setup. So I've got 110 power for when I'm operating stuff here or outside. The cool thing too, with this, uh, these struts, not struts, but our, our extrusions, I can put T-bolts anywhere on this thing. I can mount goodies all over the place. So this is just one here if I want to do a tie point there or if I want to mount some lights. Uh, the other side is pretty much more of the same, but again, I got mounting here. I've got mounting there. I've got mounting there. I got mounting there. I got mounting there. Even in the deck of this thing, I've got two rows of 10 millimeter uh, nuts that are mounted inside this. So you can bolt things onto the deck without freaking out having to drill holes in it. So nice setup. Again, legifying the overland industry is what we're really going for it's going to help you change up stuff if you can't afford the full thing we're trying to incorporate from our mid low level stuff to our highest end everything ties together so if you start in on a budget you decide you fall in love with it and you're able to get a big enough loan or you just made the jackpot you can go ahead and change those components and add them to your ultimate setup okay so on this side I keep these side, the passenger side I keep very basic. I like to just loosely pack things in here. I'll keep my Jackery power source. I got my microwave hiding in here. It's now November. I've got my diesel fired heater stashed up there. I've got my mobile Jackery solar panels, which quite frankly, other than being cold, now you'll park in the sun, but normally I'm parking in the shade. So half the time, if I get a solar panel on my, uh, my rooftop tent, a, I'm facing the wrong way, or B, I've got too much of an angle on it, doesn't work anyway. So the mobile ones are great. But a cool little thing that we got is our hitchhiker table here. So like I said, I'm trying to keep this one more mo a little more modular and light. So instead of mounting another fold-out or slide-out table, we got this guy here. So this could go on either side. This could go on our canopy campers as well. Now I've got a simple little table for doing whatever. Usually this is where I'm working on something parts wise. So I'll stash some goodies on this. Um, it's just a nice setup through there. It's just nice to have that. It's wicked light. You can throw it in the back anywhere you want. Um, and if you don't need it, you don't need it. But if you do, it's a nice option. Another thing that's kind of cool, when you look inside the box here, we actually run extrusions throughout this whole setup in there all the way through. Those extrusions are all slot extrusions, so you could go ahead and bolt and mount things. Like my ladder, there's nothing special here. I did one of our little uh, T-bolts with a through deal here and a bungee cord to hold that up. And then I've also got my little hiking poles. Again, the ability to just go on your own and, and make it the way you want is really what we're all about. Again, that's legification of this whole industry. I think it's gonna go a long way for you guys. All right, you guys, <clears throat> the dirt box wedgie, favorite tent. Uh, this is a relatively smallish tent. Um, I shouldn't call it small. This is pretty standard, but it's not a behemoth. 134 pounds, wicked light, maybe up to 135 on a, on a day where we had extra paint on there. But this is kind of our favorite for more getting into the trees and all in a little bit more extreme off-road. Aerodynamics are there. The, the struts are hidden inside it. It's a honeycomb construction over the top, honeycomb on the bottom. 10 millimeter on the top, 20 millimeter on the bottom. Um, and it's just simple. The wedge style tents, 
as of now, are still the most, the fastest to deploy, the fastest to take down, the best for shedding rain, uh, snow, stuff starts, you know, sheds off the back. They're just kind of really the way to go. Uh, they may not have, be as roomy as a lot of these others, but I'm telling you, man, fabric over my head, full of rain and snow just on there. The problem with that setup is you get a lot of, you get a lot of moisture soaking into that fabric. Even if you aren't in foul weather, you've got condensation that's gonna build up on the inside. And once you close up that tent, you could get mildew, mold, all that stuff. So at some point you gotta open that up. So the wedgies are kind of the way to go for less fabric being exposed to that. So anyway, simple deploy. As you notice, we actually put tents on the correct direction. We don't put them on backwards, meaning we don't have the opening hanging off the back end. We do the opening up in the front here. Um, we've done that for quite a long time, and that is primarily just to allow you guys to, you got a deck. I mean, it's total, this is fantastic. You can sit there in the morning, you come out. If you plan this strategically and you have a solar panel up on the roof, plan with that thing in the sunlight in the morning, getting your early charge as opposed to the sun coming and baking you. And with all of our tents, anything that we recommend or that we build, we do insulation in the top anyway. So if it's beaten down the back, it's not heating me up inside there. And I don't have the sun blaring in my face in the morning. I'll have a storage box here. I could have my um, diesel fired heater blowing into the tent. It's just a, a nice option. But again, with this system, what I did not tell you is we have l track on the top of the box, the dirt box itself. Um, so you could run your extruded aluminum crossbars, which we offer uh, as many as you want. You can set up the tent however you like. It could be sideways, it could be this, it could be that. So that's just a nice deal. And again, with the dirt box wedgie tent, our Tellurica setup, it's light, it's aerodynamic, the struts are hidden inside. This one is the one that I use all the time, so I keep it. I've got sleeping pad, extra sleeping pad, electric blanket, blanket, uh, a sleeping bag, two pillows, and I even have our zip out uh, liner in this thing, and it still closes up nice. You have the rain fly awning, which is up here, and that's just the typical little bars that come out to hold that out. And it's not too obtrusive to, you know, you still have room to stand up in there. So this is kind of a crowd favorite, and we even have lighting in this thing. So you could change it from a regular white light to an amber light. It's just a nice setup. You know, lots of people want a much larger setup than this, but man, you don't really need it. Want, give it a shot if you don't like it, you know, get a bigger tent, but the detriment of a bigger tent is extra weight and that weight is upstairs. You know, some guys, some customers, unfortunately have gone so large that they're mandated to actually put a tent on a trailer. And I'm like, you kind of defeated the whole purpose. So trailers are cool, but they're kind of a pain in the ass to haul around all the time. So this is kind of my favorite setup and you could put your boxes and everything up here as well. So. <laughs> Okay, next we're gonna go ahead and show you guys the 270 awning. Lots of two people making awnings out there. We've gone, three, we've gone through three different iterations from ultra light to a little on the chunky side to what we're super happy with. What makes me happy about this guy is it's easy to deploy. It's a lot easier if it's not so stinking tall, but that's not the awning's fault, that's the Jeep itself. So one thing that we've done is We've gone a little oversized with the actual storage bag because <clears throat> I think that's been my biggest gripe over the last seven, eight years is just stowing this thing away. It's just so big. You just got to get everything just right. And I just like to wad the whole mess up. So it quickly comes out. We basically just tie on. I've got a link up on one of the extrusions here where I tie that on there. I've got the ability, we have illumination down all the way through this. It is a freestanding awning. It will handle some pretty severe winds, but if stuff gets too rowdy for us, we've got legs, drop down, and then you should anchor that guy into the ground because the wind's literally gonna be blowing the truck all over the place. This thing handles it, but you wanna have this and an anchor to keep it from just shaking the heck out of your truck. One thing that's also kind of nice is the shape of this awning too. It's a very square setup. So it runs parallel through here, par parallel across the back. And then almost, I wouldn't call it a 45, but definitely a 45 on the front. 
it just gives me a lot of room. So the problem, you know, the deal is we live outside. When it rains, there's generally a breeze. So it doesn't come straight down, everybody. It comes in at an angle. So with some of these other awnings, there's just not enough space. But there's also a fine line that has to be chosen. You can't go bodaciously large because they get heavy. Uh, this guy, if I remember right, is 44 pounds with the legs, with the lights, and again, with the oversized bag. And then we chose to go with a Velcro fastening system for the complete enclosure. Reason for doing that is our first one, we used a zipper, which was great. It sealed up fantastic, but it's a pain in the butt because you've got this long, ends up being like a 30 foot long zipper that you've got to get all these little wrinkles out of. Or if you damage the zipper some way along there, you're kind of toast. Velcro is a lot more forgiving on you on that. So the neat thing too, so our plugins for each individual lighter up here, you could put your little battery pack in here, which I've got actually the plug-in cord there, or this could be toiletries or whatever you've got. What I found myself doing is instead, because when all these lights are going, it's pretty bright and it's pulling, I think a total of about 55 watts with all of them at full bore. I'll unplug and just leave one, maybe one out there and I'll do one here and it's just perfect. Or I'll do a single one out there for the light and then rely on the canopy. Cause you look, I've got the accessibility to still have this underneath here. So I could have, again, if I'm trying to prep for weather's getting ugly or the sun's too hot, I could still deploy this guy here. I still got enough coverage where I could go ahead and work on this during foul weather. So it is definitely a plus there. I'm gonna go ahead and also show you a nice addition is the shower, the hard case shower setup. So this is pretty slick. The pass, the driver's side of the vehicle, I could keep an eye on when I'm going through the trees. Therefore, I've got that big awning, that big side bag awning there. If anyone's wheeled a lot with awnings on either side of their vehicle, you always rip the bag on your passenger side because you just can't watch it all the time. So we've developed a hard case shower setup on here, which is pretty slick. It would be cool except for, I mean, it is cool, but I've got all this stuff in the way. And then when I deploy the shower out here, I can't open any of these goodies. So we've went ahead and incorporated a swing out 90 degree setup on this guy. So deployment is very simple. You've got this guy through here. That guy comes down there and boom, there you go. So that, to that, we've done on the inside of this guy, instead of the same, nylon fabric you feel through here. We've actually done kind of like a foil fabric on the inside. Two reasons. One of them helps reflect light. It's good when you're trying to get clean in those spots you can't see very well, right? Also, soap scum, water stains, definitely wipe off this a lot easier. When it's in here on typical fabric, you get that embedded in there. It's just hard to get off. So there's zippers inside for handing things through, shower bags everywhere. You can adjust the height with the Velcro strap through here as well. Uh, there's just a lot of options with that. And then you've got basically poles that are in there that help kind of retain the shape. We're going to come up. We, it also comes with a kit to go ahead and tie that thing down to the ground because it's face is going to blow around. That's just the nature of outdoors. We're working on something that's going to be quick and easy. That's going to help retain that shape even better in more extreme whim situations. You know, we're here in Colorado, central Colorado, but it gets pretty windy here, but it gets even worse when you go across to Nebraska or you go to Wyoming. So that's coming up. It'll be nice. Uh, another neat thing about our hard case awning, <clears throat> the way this thing folds up, the cover that goes down over that, we have two little bungees over it. There's actually a slight air gap in there. So on a typical awning setup, you zip it up in pretty much a waterproof bag, darn near waterproof, condensation, mold, all that. Shower awning is going to get gross. Let's face it. Um, you're going to get it wet and you're probably not going to have it hundred percent dry. Even with the foil backed um, material we use, you may put it away wet. By having that hard case in there, there's a little bit of an air gap underneath. That's actually going to help dehumidify and dry out the thing as you're going down the road. So that is definitely a plus as well. That is pretty much everything on the hybrid box setup, the half box. Next in line is going to be El Grande, the full size box. All right, time for the big boy.
Same setup, by the way, same flatbed, just a different box. These four brackets here, unbolt, whole thing could lift off. We actually, we are working on making this available to everybody, but currently we actually have our own, basically camper jack legs that bolt onto this. We can lift the whole assembly off, drive out from underneath it, it's nice. The deal is with the dirt boxes, the uh, canopies, they're fully enclosed. So it's got a framework underneath, uh, sides, top. So this is completely sealed up separate. So that allows us to go ahead and permanently mount all of our components inside the box itself that then could be lifted off as opposed to it being bolted to this bed with a cover over it. So this is whenever you open up your dirt box, you hop out your driver's door, you come back here, you typically will have disconnected your main power switch, which is hiding right up here. So that's our control board set up through there. This turns on the power. I already had the lights turned on there, but I could also control them right there. As I've stated before, that's a big light. So I could go ahead and hold my finger on that and dim that way down and help us out a little bit here. So that's a nice plus. This side is kind of uh, the open side for the unit. We've got the slide out toolbox, which is awesome by the way, because you could still strap all your goodies on there. I'll usually have a big jackery on here and then I'll go ahead and strap my microwave on top of that as well. But now I've got this guy that comes out, folds out again, and then he's got it full of water and some other goodies. I have all my, my electrical stuff. Uh, sometimes I'll have hiking poles in here. Maybe I'll have cleats, ice cleats for my boots. All that stuff stays in here for me. And then this gives me a nice little platform to be able to work on some goodies as well. It's a, a, a neat deal. You see on this one, he's got a molly panel through here. He's got another molly panel here. So we've got, I'll go ahead and shut that off. So you can see he's got all sorts of goodies stashed up through this guy. Really nice. And again, we can change our, our strut setup. We could change the angle to go up a little higher, or we could also go with a stronger, uh, stiffer strut as well. On this guy, We've got our cool little guards here. So little dirt box latch guards. This is for if components start sliding out and push up against there, keep you from opening it. That just stops that from going on. It's just laser engraved, easy stuff like that. But easy. I typically will come back to the rig, open this up, get all my little goodies, assemble them from what I'm gonna do, close this and it's there. I typically will always have this full of knickknack stuff because this whole back section here is completely open for stuffing with whatever you want. We've also got chairs, sleeping bags, all that goes in this molly box. That's a pass through all the way to the other side. Neat thing with this deal, as I've stated in the past, is we run extrusions through the whole perimeter of this thing. You've got extrusion there, there. You see he's got a little tie point for holding one of his cords for the refrigerator. We've got a huge Renogy 2000 watt inverter. We've got, this is a sweet setup. This is, I believe, a 50 amp uh, DC-DC charger, but allows us to get our power alternator from solar and whatever else all in one unit. So that's kept up nice on his little power wall here. So there's also a separate lithium ion battery. We've got a lithium ion battery that's heated that stays in the sky because lots of times, even with the Jackery and whatnot, they don't hold up in the cold weather. So we've always got backup power from that heated lithium ion battery all the time. And then once the temperature gets up to where it needs to be here, everything else is going to start working. Some of you guys who are lucky enough to live in the warm weather, you're just not experiencing all the good stuff. That's all I can say. Boom, roasted. I've already touched base on all the storage boxes. And I told you different units, depending on wheelbase, will also have the ability for da -da, a fourth box. Yeah, you can barely call it a box. It's awfully small. But what's really cool is he's got his air system, extra caps and whatnot on there. So he's got a tire inflation system on all the corners. He opens up, hooks it to here to here, and all good to go. You could obviously put more in there, um, but this system had that. The reason you could do this on the Brute versus the Gladiators, they actually have a different shape back here. So I wish I had this so bad. But again, lots of, especially if you're lucky enough to have a long wheelbase taco, You've got a beautiful box here. You got one through there. The long wheelbase taco with the full box in there is like, it's like the Titanic. It's amazing. You've got so much room. There's a ballroom up there. You know, it's, a, it's cool stuff. And again, same storage up through here, just like you would have on some of the typical ones. I think we're sharing the same length box there. But when you roll around to the back here, <clears throat> we've got a little shelf ledge through here. And that is for obvious things, mounting more fuel cans, spare tire, uh, we've got your propane mount. We make a slick little bracket to go on this corner. This could be for an antenna mount. 
This could be for our bracketry for uh, mounting awnings. It's a slotted setup, so we have kind of a universal bracket that goes on here. So if you do want to mount that, we can. And then another nice thing, if the tent was mounted backwards, opening this way, we've got, along with the spare tire carrier, is our built-in ladder setup. So I can sit there and climb up and take care of whatever I need to up here, and it's wicked light. I don't think that this whole tire carrier weighs more than maybe 24 pounds. It's super, super light, really trick setup. So this is good for just getting up and dealing with things, especially if your tent happens to open this way, you could, you know, this is your access to there. But a nice deal, because that'll also handle up to a 37 inch spare tire, which is pretty impressive. So the other side, go-go side here, is the cool stuff. He's got his uh, traction boards up above, and he's got his kitchen and his fridge freezer combo. We also have another little box set up in here. Like I keep saying over and over, you can mount things wherever you want. So we opted for having this guy here. Um, it fits perfectly uh, with the uh, kitchen setup. So pretty easy. This, you know, you've seen sliders before. This is a big full-size slider. We use it. We're trying out the Iceco box, like it, because it opens up from there, and it also opens up there. Um, so big, big setup there. That's nice. And then, probably our, my favorite setup is going to be the drop slider, dirt box, kitchen setup. So you've got access, he's got his jet boil in there, cutting boards, the little wash base and all that. I could still get to some goodies in here, but when I'm getting ready to use it for actual usage in the camp, bring this guy out, pull him all the way to here, grab onto that, get it lowered down to this operating height. And then she comes out there. This is set up to handle either you could do our little expanding sink set up through here, but we're also gonna come up with a cool little bamboo cutting board for you guys that could drop in there. So if you wanna use it just for more food preps to area, you could cook on this, you could cook on that, or we'll set up to cook on that. So this is just a good deal for, I mean, you know, I'm sitting here, I've got, what more could you want? I've got my food here, I got my prep here, inside this box here, I've got my water system there, and I could have other goodies in there as well. So just a nice, easy setup for doing food prep. And here's another thing too that's kind of important. I haven't read the rules, but if you're not really supposed to be camping somewhere, it doesn't seem to me, if, if nothing's touching the ground, I'm not really camping, right? I'm just getting into some of my stuff. So there's one thing to think about on that. Okay, again, why would you go with the flatbed setup versus the canopy camper? Yes, there's a lot more expense in it, but there's also a lot more packability in this guy. Canopy campers are great, but you're still kind of limited by the factory body that you're on there and you lose some storage. My favorite is obviously this, because this is what I run. There are some things come down the pipeline that if you are insistent you have to have a canopy and you want a flatbed, keep your eyes open. We got some pretty cool stuff that's gonna be right up your alley. If you are interested in our products or you've got questions on this stuff, look us up. It's uh, dirtboxoverland.com, dirtboxoverland.com. More stuff gets added on every month. There's something new. We keep creating new products, trying to drain your uh, wallet because it's cool. You don't have to have it, but you're going to want it. Trust me.